morning and welcome to another awesome segment of the Power in the Word broadcast with Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church, where Reverend Gerald Parker Sr. is our wonderful pastor. Our church motto is, let's do it God's way. There is power in the Word. Let's watch and listen. Yes, sir. You know, uh, I like... I would, I would say, I would ask you to say thank you, but now, if I ask you to say thank you, and you say thank you, God wouldn't get the glory. Because you'd be, you'd be saying thank you because the pastor said thank you. But that's not the kind of thank you God wants. What God wants is a voluntary thank you. And, and I'd like, and I'd like, I just like to make this announcement. I don't know what kind of effect it's going to have, but I've been prompted by the Holy Spirit to make this announcement. <clears throat> and the announcement is, you won't be able to say thank you when you're dead. Amen. You won't. You won't be able to say praise the Lord when you're dead. And the way I, way I look at it is that when you are dead, you'll be laying back. Either you're going to have your hands over your chest or down by, by the side. And you'll be just like this. People are going to pass by. They're going to say, boy, she sure look natural. <laughs> or he looks natural. And in other words, and now there's going to be some to say they look natural because that's the way they sit in the pew every Sunday. <laughs> so the only difference between you in the casket and sitting in the pew is that you'd be sitting in the pew saying nothing and then you'd be in the casket saying nothing. So while you have breath in your body, hallelujah! While you have breath in your body, and if, just if, if you have something to thank him for. See, everybody here don't have something to thank God for. Because if you did, you'd be thanking him. So you ought to be saying right now, Lord, while I have a chance, while I have breath in my body, while my heart is beating, I'm going to give you glory and I'm going to give you praise. And I'm not going to worry about who's sitting next to me. Y'all, y'all, y'all say, excuse me, y'all say, excuse me, please. Y'all say, excuse me, but I, God been too good to me. Excuse me, please. And if I, if I accidentally step on your toe, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I, you know, really, really, I, you know, it, but, it, but I, I'm going I'm to I'm read the text, but it has to come from the heart. It really does. It, 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 it's, a, it's, it's a mindset that you got to have when you come in here. And you can't get that mindset Come, you got to have it before you get here. I'm going to ask this morning that you would turn to the Gospel of St. John, 
the 12th chapter and verse 32. Thank you for your word, Lord. And as we turn these pages, Lord, you have brought us from a mighty long way. I know that's right. Jesus Christ, man. Mm, mm, mm. Now you turn to John 12 and 32. What a passage. And those of you who have a red letter Bible, this indicates that these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it reads, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. That's what he said. And we want to take a portion of that little verse for a subject. If I be lifted up. May be seated. Say it with me and then it say, if I, if I be, lifted be lifted up. This statement is one of the greatest statements the master has ever uttered. And what has happened is that many songwriters and many people have taken this phrase and if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. They have taken it out of context. And there have been uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the great songs of the church uh, goes like this. Lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. Then it says, and I... If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And don't get me wrong now, that's, that's a song. It's, we used to sing it. That's a song. And then one, one of the verses says, All the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the words that he said. I'll draw all men unto me. Great song, great words, but wrong interpretation. And many times people will say, you know, you got to lift Jesus up. And you know, Jesus said in John 12 and 32, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And I need to say this here, my brothers and sisters. When Jesus uttered those blessed words, he was not encouraging the people he was talking to. Neither was he encouraging us to lift him up, at least not in that particular verse. And before I go into further, let me tell you, we're supposed to lift Jesus up. We're supposed to glorify him. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 tell us to, 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 to always give thanks. And so we're supposed to be constantly giving thanks to God and praising him and lifting him up. But in this particular verse, the Lord was not talking about lifting us, lifting him up. The, the, the song had a good intention, but wrong interpretation. Somebody say, what do you mean, Reverend? I, I don't understand that because I've always said, I've always used that to try to encourage. No, but, well, you need, you need to, you see, what I have found out, this is it. I'm going to teach a little bit, is that in order to truly understand a verse, first of all, you must pray and ask God to open up your eyes. But also, you must consider the context from which that scripture uh, has come, up, come about. Context deals with the historical setting, the context uh, uh, deals with when it was particular, when this particular verse was spoken, and the context also deals with why Jesus said these words. I need to let you know here, and it's beyond the shell of a doubt, 
He was not talking about the world lifting him up. Somebody said, well, holy pastor, well, how dare you tear that verse up? Well, I'm not turning it up. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to say it just like it is. You see, notice now, and somebody said, well, what do you mean, pastor? Well, I want you to notice now, if you look at John, the 12th chapter, verse 32, it begins with the word and. Y'all see the word and? and? And that word and, it's a conjunction. And the purpose for a conjunction the purpose for and is to connect this verse with the previous verses. And in order for us to understand what Jesus meant in John 12, 32, we got to go back past the and and see what took place before Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. I wish I had time to, to go from verse 1 all the way to verse 32, but time would not allow us, but I will let you know this, is that if, if, if we could just look, take a glaze here uh, in, in, in John, the 12th chapter, praise God, verses 1 through 9, what we see here is Jesus going into the little town of Bethany. Everybody say Bethany. Yeah. It was in Bethany where Mary and Martha gave Jesus a supper. I, I believe it was a Thanksgiving supper, and the reason why it was a Thanksgiving supper, because Lazarus was there, and Lazarus was once dead, but Jesus raised him up. You all, you, uh, yeah, he, he was dead. And Lazarus was there. So it's, and so in John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 8, we see Jesus in Bethany. And the scripture says in John, the 12th chapter, verse 1, that it was six days before the Passover. Everybody say Passover. The Passover was a Jewish feast where people remembered how God, praise God, in his redeeming, salvatic power, uh, commanded the children of Israel to kill a lamb and to cut the lamb's throat and take the blood and put it over the doorpost. And when the death angel came, when the death angel saw the blood of the lamb, they passed over and they were, they were actually redeemed and delivered. The Passover feast was a time to remember what God had done. I need to say this now. It's amazing to me. What, what, what made this scripture so beautiful was this was six days before the Passover where people would kill thousands of lambs. But there at Bethany was not just one of the lambs. It was the Lamb of God. Amen. All right, that, that's enough of that. And then I wish I had time. And Andy says they invited Jesus to the house. Let me ask you a question. Just in case you might go to sleep before I get through. <laughs> Mary and Martha welcomed Jesus to the house. Let me ask you a question. Oh, back here and over here and everywhere. Is Jesus welcome to your house? Is he welcome? I, I, know, I know you come in here today and I know you got your... Some of you got your Sunday best on and you got your Sunday attire on. But when you get to the house, is he welcome to come back home with you? And so if you would notice here, and then, and, and then when you move on, praise God, uh, to verses 9 and 9, it tells us that there in Jerusalem, there were some chief priests who desired to kill Lazarus. Everybody say, kill Lazarus. I want you to see, because this is something that is sometimes overlooked, and we're going to get into the meat of the text. It said this, it said, Much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But then it says, praise God, in verse 10, But the chief priest, everybody say, but the chief priest. But the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. I want y'all to notice something here. The chief priest wanted to kill Jesus, but they also wanted to kill Lazarus. Why would they want to kill Lazarus? After all, Jesus had raised him from the dead. They wanted to kill Lazarus because of Lazarus' life. He was a, he was a, he was a living example of the power of God. And he was a threat to the chief priests in Jerusalem. Not only did they want to kill Jesus, but they wanted to kill Lazarus as well. I need to say this now, there is, there is nowhere in the Bible where any words of Lazarus is quoted. 
You never hear him say one word, but guess what? Although he never said one word, his life spoke what he lived. In other words, just to, in other words, by the way he lived, spoke volumes that he had had something to do with Jesus Christ. And I need to say this now. If you never say a word, does your life show the world that you've been raised from a dead level to a living perpendicular? Without even saying a word. Can the people say, that's a child of God? Not by your words, not by your yet, 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 but by your life. So I'm trying, I, I got to move on there. And so all this was taking place, and it was six days before the Passover. I got, to, I got to tell you this, this was also six days before Jesus would be hanging on the cross. So, so what we have here in John, the 12th chapter, records the days leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And then as you go on, let's move on. Oh, boy, I, I tell you, I wish, sometimes I wish that this scenario was just like it was in Nehemiah, the 8th chapter. When you read Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, you read where the ch children w walked up to Ezra's house, and they knocked on the door, and they asked Ezra, Ezra, bring the book out. We want you to preach to us. And then what happened was Ezra brought the book out. He opened the book up. He praised God. And the people stood up. And then they sat down, and Ezra preached and shared the Bible all day long. They didn't have watches. From sun up to sundown, he stood there just preaching the word of God. He had, and I wish, sometimes I wish that we have some people like that here at Pilgrim Progress. Well, well, I didn't have to be confined to just 30 or 40 minutes because there's so much in this word. I wish I had time, but I got to move on to the very text. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But I need to say this now. When you move on into this context, you'll also read in verses 20 and 21 where, where, where the Greeks looked out for Jesus. In other words, not only were the Jews there to see Jesus, but the scripture says there were some Greeks who were non-Jews desired to see Jesus. And they walked up to Philip and said, we would see Jesus. And then Philip told Andrew, I'm just trying to tell a story. And then Philip and Andrew came to Jesus and said, you know, Jesus, there are some Greeks here that want to see you. And then everything changes from that time forth. Let's go to verse 23. And he said this. Are y'all still with me? Yes. I guarantee you we'll be through here in about, about three hours. And Jesus answered, saying, the hour is come. Yes, sir. Ooh, I want y'all to see this. Because those of you who are Bible students know that leading up to this, Jesus constantly said, my hour has not come. Yes. Yes, sir. He, he constantly said that. He said that to his mother. He said that to the disciples, my hour has not come. But in this particular text... He says in verse 23, y'all got to see this here. He says, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Yes, my time is here. That, that, that word, that word uh, hour means my season is now here. And then what he does, somebody said, what are you talking about? Then he tells this story in verse 24. He said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, look at verse 24, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Jesus, Jesus, what you talking about? You talking about, a, you talking about a seed going into the ground? What you talking about, a seed going into the ground? Are you, are, what you said? What he, what he said was, as long as that seed is by itself, it will do no good. But once you put that seed in the ground and that seed die, it's only after that seed die and is buried that it will come up with great fruit. He was talking about himself. I wish I could move on and on, but I'm, I'm going to get on down to verse 32. And then Jesus said these words. He said these words. He said these words. And I. That, that word I, it's an it's a emphatic pronoun, which 
put emphasis on oneself. He said, and I. If I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Who was he talking to? Not only was he talking to the disciples, but he was talking to the crowd that was around him. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And I know some of you all are telling me this, but pastor, that, that is, he said, if he be lifted up, now come on, pastor, are you telling me that he wasn't talking about us lifting him up? No, he was not talking about that. And I thank God for, for St. John, because what St. John does in verse 33, it's a parenthetical phrase. But what John does in verse 33, he explains what Jesus was talking about in verse 32. Are you still with me? Some might say he's teaching. Yes, he is teaching. And in verse 33, it said this, John record. look at verse 33, John records, he said, this he said, signifying what death he should die. In other words, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw men unto me. He was signifying what kind of death he would die. The New Living Translation says, he said this to indicate how he was going to die. The message Bible said he put it this way to show how he was going to be put to death. And notice he said if. See that word if? Some people have a problem with that, with that, with that word if. That, 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 that word if is a conditional uh, a phrase, but that word if can also mean when. It was not, it was not a if with Jesus' death. It was just a when. Because it had been prophesied many before, thousand years before Jesus even came into the world that he would die on the cross between two thieves. It was not an if situation. It was going to happen. And Jesus said, and, and then he, said, he used this term, if I be lifted, everybody say lifted. And so when he said lifted between earth and heaven, you know what he was talking about? He was talking about him being crucified on the cross. Yeah, I did say cross. I did say cross. He, he, he was talking about being lifted from the earth, between heaven and earth. He was referring Pilgrim Progress and Visitors to his demise on the cross. John says in John the third chapter, verse 14, he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In other words, some of you might know that story. It's, it's, it's in Numbers, praise God, the 21st chapter, where the children of Israel were in the wilderness, and they started complaining. I mean, they started complaining after all what God had done for them. Here they were complaining. Bought them out of, out of Egypt into the wilderness. He was feeding them. He delivered them from Pharaoh's army. When they got hungry, he sent down manna from on high. And here they were in the wilderness, and they started complaining. We, we, we tired of this manna. We, we tired of this light bread. We, 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 want, we want some more kind of food. In other words, they were, they, were, they, were not, they were complaining about what God had done. They forgot about all his blessings, and they were thinking about what they didn't have. I want to let you know right now, stop complaining about what you don't have. Think about what you already have. You ought to thank God. Stop complaining. What God did, he sent some fiery And while they were complaining, I don't know why God put us out here to die. We don't have this. All we got is this light bread. We ain't got no water. Ah, ah, ah. And while they were complaining, God sent some fiery serpents. And those fiery serpents start biting up some folks. And they start dying. And then he went to Moses. And Moses, Moses, we sorry. We, we wrong. And Moses went to God and said, God, deliver them. He said, I'll tell you what I want you to do, Moses. Make a serpent out of bronze. Put it on a pole. Raise it up. And those people who are dying from this poisonous snake, lift that serpent up. And those who look up to the lifted up serpent 
If they look up, they shall live. Are y'all going to help me here? And that serpent that was lifted up represented the uplifted Christ. If I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I'm preaching on the cross. I'm talking about the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Here, it's, 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 it's. Everybody talk about the full gospel. I'm giving you the full gospel. There is, there is, there is no full gospel without the cross of Jesus Christ. How much y'all, how much y'all get this? You, you got to get this. You got to get this. Even, even Paul in, in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, he was, he was telling them folks, he was saying, I'm, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you all. He said, the Lord didn't call me to baptize. You got to read 1 first, first Corinthians 1. He says, Lord did not call me to baptize. He called me to preach the gospel. And when Paul preached, you know what Paul preached? Paul didn't preach, Brother Kelly, health, wealth, and prosperity. Paul didn't preach, if you hold out a little longer, you're going to make it. Paul didn't preach, uh, if, if you just hold out, you'll get that car. You'll get, he preached the cross of Jesus Christ. Everybody say cross. Because I've come to tell you, there will be no prosperity unless you go by the cross. He said, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, he said, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. In other words, those preachers who have a nerve to preach the cross Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, they will be considered by the world to be foolish. If you want to fill the pews up, stop talking about the cross. And start talking about how you're going to be blessed and get out your anointing oil and start anointing people upside the head, grease their heads and talk about breakthrough and talk about money and talk about houses and Talk about prosperity. Leave the cross alone. Thank you for viewing this segment of the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministry, please send an email to ppbc1912 at aol.com. Or you may call our church office at 501 501- 372-4429 where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Also, like and link to us on our Facebook page by searching for Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church or visit us on our web page at www.pilgrimprogress.org Join us again each Wednesday and Sunday morning at 5 a.m. Have a wonderful and blessed day.